Sorry guys, just jamming out. This kicker boom box here. We got a couple to go over. We have the, right here is the ZK350. We got the IK500. And then we got the amphitheater Bluetooth. So stay tuned as we uh, go over these three individual boom boxes. And we're going to run an SPL test on the SPL lab. And we're going to use the handheld meter to see how loud it is musically. And just go over a few of the uh, specifications, features of these said boom boxes. I think these things are awesome, man. This one uh, is portable and the other two were not, but this one isn't as loud, but you know what? It makes up for it because I can carry it around. So stay tuned and check out these awesome old school boom boxes. All right, the first one we're gonna go over real fast is the uh, ZK 350. They came in the IK and the ZK for the Zune and the uh, iPhone. These are 10 watts RMS by two. They have an additional on the rear auxiliary inputs for your uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. Has the uh, battery case right here on the bottom that connects to the top. And then you have a 12 volt power supply that charges the battery and or you can unplug this and just charge it directly here without having the battery connected. This is an antenna that was for the Zune. I don't have a Zune, so I can't really test that. And then as well back here, you have uh, audio outs and video out for when you have your Zune hooked up. Um, it's pretty simple interface. You just press it once to turn it on. Uh, shows you that I'm in the aux mode. If I had a Zune, I could hook that up as well. Uh, go over, I can change the treble, the bass, stuff like that and then right here when it starts blinking the aux that means i can change it from dock which would be the zune or to the aux and then it just has an additional headphone out jack here and as well it has a remote which is nice too and it's magnetic so you can click it right under here and this is the portable version of the uh boom boxes which is pretty cool it's the smallest of the set and not as loud as the rest but i mean it's pretty darn cool it has the passive radi radiator on the rear um, this is not a port, this is a handle to carry it. Uh, so when you're taking this to travel, uh, playing it wherever you are, at a picnic, a party, tailgating, whatever you're doing, it's pretty cool to use. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next one so we can get to the SPL testing as quick as we can and uh, hold tight. All right, the next one we're gonna go over is the ZK500. Now they had two models of this, the ZK and the IK. Yet again, this is the Zune model with the dock right here. We got your dial up front there. Same kind of settings as the other one that we went over with the 350 where you have your bass, your treble, all with the push of a button, very simple interface. And again, we have the passive radiator. This is a six inch passive radiator on the rear. And we have your uh, 22 volt uh, power supply input and your auxiliary. And again, on this one, we have audio out, but no video out. So they did away with that on this one. Um, and this one's a heck of a lot louder with 20 watts by two. So twice the power. Um, I think a little bit bigger speakers. Um, and it also has these tweeters up top like the other one has. But this is just a lot louder in my opinion uh, than the ZK350. But this one is not portable. No battery pack, no magnetic uh, remote holder but it does have a remote as well. And uh, I think that's about it for this one here. So let's go on to the Bluetooth amphitheater and get this show on the road. All right, last up is the 40 IK5 Bluetooth. Now this is not the lightning edition, it has your 30 pin connector here. Um, you can buy an additional adapter for that, which this one came with, which is awesome. Um, has a remote, a little fancier remote, nothing too crazy, but a little bit fancier. Um, and then as you can see, there's no turn dial on this one. So the way you change your volume, how you change your source is on the top here, you have your volume on the right hand side, and then you got your source pair and your uh, mute button over here. So when you're pairing your Bluetooth from your phone or whatever device you are using, you would go from here for your source, etc. And then on the bottom here lights up different colors, pink, blue, white for uh, which source you're using. And it also will show error codes as well if there's a problem with the device. On the rear, you have another six inch passive radiator. This one does not have a grill cover, which I'm not, a, I'm a fan of the grill cover. And they made the 
kicker emblem a little bit smaller. I kind of like that big emblem on the back there. But hey, everything's for a little bit more of a sleeker look. Um, and on the back, this has an additional turn on, turn off button because this one up here does not have it up here. So, uh, and there's no turn dial. So you have to have a switch down here. Then you have your 24 volt input because this one is a 25 RMS by two. So five watts more RMS per uh, channel than the IK500. And then you have your auxiliary input for your MP3 uh, jack. And then it also has a USB and this is only charging. So it will not play a USB drive, but it will charge your device. Um, and that's about it for the amphitheater. I really like the shape of this thing. This thing looks a lot more um, unique in the design, uh, more of an amphitheater kind of look. You like how you get the convex or concave look, whichever is which, I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, it makes it sound a little bit more clean, I would say, rather than a flat plane. But uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this thing. So let's put these on the uh, test area, get these hooked up, and let's do some testing. Stay tuned. All right, we got the SPL Lab software up. And the first one we're gonna do is this little ZK350. And what we're gonna do for the SPL Lab, since it measures sound pressure in the lower frequencies, we are going to measure at the port slash radiator to see what kind of scores we can get coming from that. I believe that'll yield the best scores. One thing I wanna go over is I picked up this little uh, setup where I can hook up uh, five uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks and run them all from one source, which is pretty cool. And that's how I'm running all three of these together at once. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna meter it by itself and see how it does. All right, stay tuned. Now bear with me because I gotta hold this right here at the same time as I'm testing. All right, this is the ZK350. We're gonna find its peak real fast and go from there. All right, looks like we got a 126.6 at the radiator at 67 hertz. Let's try that 67 hertz real fast and uh, send it. Nice, got a 127.8 out of that little ZK. Not bad. On to the next. All right, the next one here is gonna be set up right at the passive radiator as close as we can get it. One thirty-one point two at sixty-two hertz. Not bad. We could try the sixty-seven. See what it does, like the other one did. Nice. One thirty-one point six. That ain't bad at all. That ain't bad at all. All right, on to the next one. All right, last but not least, we're gonna hook it up to the uh, kicker amphitheater. Bluetooth, we're gonna hold it about as close as we can get it and see what kind of sound pressure we can get out of this thing. All right, let's try uh, 67 hertz. It seems like that's the number here for these boom boxes. One thirty-one point three. We try 62 hertz. See if that makes a difference. Eh? Tad. Sixty four hertz. I think sixty four hertz is our number with a one thirty one point seven. Um, 
all pretty much around the same as you can see the two bigger amphitheaters did uh, put up a little bit higher of a score all around the uh, mid 60 range which is not bad at all now from my experience um, let's test the uh, amphitheater here the Bluetooth amphitheater from my experience it plays the lowest so let's try um, let's try 30 Hertz see if it can get that low not bad 114 almost 115 at 30 Hertz let's try 35 Hertz One twenty point three. Forty hertz. Anything below is wasted information, right? Nice game. One twenty four point two. Let's try forty five hertz. Nice. I mean, as you can hear, this thing is it's definitely playing <laughs> them lows. It's 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 nice, man. All right, well, let's take a break from the uh, SPL testing of this kind. Let's go and test the um, sound quality slash SPL of music and see how it does. So stay tuned. All right, we're going to try one song that sounds the loudest, I think, on any of these, any kind of radio that's a boombox. And we're going to try play it for like, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds see what kind of max reading we can get we are set at three feet away from the front of the speaker to get a realistic number of a control so when we do future videos of other boom boxes if we do wink um we'll see what kind of numbers they compete with um and go from there so sit tight check out the uh spl meter right here spl and uh let's see what it does All right, here we go. Not bad we were able to get high 61 almost 62 uh, decibels from three feet away now this is not a perfectly accurate meter for warning um, but just to get an idea uh, it's saying at the rooms that are around well if I'm not talking 44 decibels and it's jumping up to 62 so to go up 20 dBs in any kind of atmosphere with this that's definitely a difference so let's move it over and go to the ZK 350 that was the IK 500 all right next one we got up is the ZK 350 the little brother of the bunch let's see what kind of scores we can get with this Not bad, not bad. As you could see, relatively the same score as the IK500 musically, but that does not determine sound quality or anything like that. But it gives you a close idea that this one can compete. It's not a bad little boombox at all, just because it's smaller. All right, last but not least, we got the amphitheater Bluetooth. This is the most powerful one, so let's see if it's any louder than the other two. Here we go. I'm going back here so I can see the score. <laughs> Oh, man, man. 
that was a huge freaking difference from the other ones. Shoot. That was a huge freaking difference. Holy crap. It's reading. That is noticeably louder on this meter. Now in person, I mean, I thought that one sounded a tiny bit better, but maybe that's situational. I don't know, but darn, that thing got down. <laughs> that was hitting 70s and then a couple peaks up to the 90s. I seen a 101 out of that. And that's three feet away on this $20 meter back in 2011. So I would love to get an RTA meter or something different where I can actually read SPL a little bit better. But for a uh, conversational matter, this this works. That's the loudest <laughs> by far. All right, real quick, I had to test this again uh, with the same song. And then... Okay. So let's move this back over here in front of, oh, in front of the ZK. Cause I'm thinking that, okay, maybe just something got messed up here. Maybe it's the meter being weird. Let me shut this off here. Okay. All right. Let's play the same thing, same distance away. we're going to do is we're going to turn it up like it says and then we're going to put the meter from side to side to see if it uh, makes a difference hold tight To be honest, I think the shape of the amphitheater makes the difference because it couples the sound together funnily in one way rather than that because the dB score at the speaker from that one and that one were about the same. Okay. But then this one here from here was lower by itself and then this one over here was higher by itself. And with both of them playing, it had a hard time picking up the score over there, but it would not hit as high because it wasn't directly in front of it. But it was still picking up the sound wave all the way over here and making this one read higher. So that's just crazy. All right, real quick. We're going to uh, fire them all towards us. They're all running at the same time and see what kind of score we can get. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you guys learned a thing or two of how loud and cool these boom boxes are. Uh, they do not make them currently, but they do have the bullfrog and uh, maybe I'll try to put a word in and see if we can get these to come back again one day. Cause you know what? These things are awesome. I love the square subwoofer passive radiator on the rear. And I don't know, I always kind of wanted one. And now I have three. Um, if you want to find them, shoot a comment down below 
I can maybe try to uh, send you some links where I find them a little bit cheaper than eBay and Amazon, but uh, only if I like you and you're subscribed, you like, and you comment, I might be able to hook you up, because I know one's floating around as I'm filming. So, hey, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good day. See you next time.